the I think there's a, there's a, there's a switch away from seeing aid uh, as a charitable. Uh, the business of pity towards something that's more professional. And if you look at political developments, in particular over the past 10 years, is that it's become aid and humanitarian aid and development and advocacy, human rights issues, have become part of foreign policy or even of military doctrine. So if aid, it's the civilian component of policy, has become that important, then governments have no choice but to invest in it to make it professional and meet their demands. Now, there's a risk of politicization, of course, that agencies who want to abide by principles of independence and charity and partiality will resist. But it really means is that um, if you want to have professional organizations with a chance of sustainable operations, you've got to invest in training. You've got to invest in the infrastructure of organizations to absorb this and have a sustainable organization. You've got to invest in academia to actually start looking at some of the baseline research that this industry needs. Needs. Now, this is all common practice in most of other industries, teaching, nursing, banking, legal, um, but in this industry of the humanitarian aid in these necessitous environments, it's relatively new. My feeling is it's going to go that way, but it's just going to be a process It's going to take a few more years. When I came onto the brief, as it were, that the, there are a number of lawyers that had devised uh, papers in their own uh, national countries of the law of negligence for aid agencies. And uh, my task was initially, if I recall, to do a 15 page summary of that and uh, to uh, express it in layman's, pages. <laughs> layman's terms. Uh, what, what was a 15 page summary has now become an 80 page. Um, uh, paper and in the process I've um, become a good friend of, of Martin and, uh, and uh, collaborator in, in, in um, coming up with something which hopefully will add a lot of value to a uh, topical issue. Yeah, um, I, I'm in, I admit to being an emocrat, right? so I'm a bit of a bureaucratic person paid for by the government and dealing with these esoteric topics. Uh, at the same time, I try to inject some of my practical experience, which makes me a bit emotional. So there's this emotional commitment and at the same time trying to be sort of um, rigorous in a bureaucratic manner. And that's what's nice to collaborate with Ed because I think we share that sort of a commitment and rigor that we were aiming for, although we come from very different worlds. Yeah, A4ID has been very helpful because, well, exactly, there, there is this expertise out there. And it's not just because the, these lawyers signed up for it for whatever reasons. It was clear and obvious throughout that they were very committed to it. I mean, it's, it's, it's quite amazing the number of drafts, the number of meetings, the number of emails throughout the year and a half, two years that it's taken to get this together to keep people involved and wishing to stay involved. So um, it, it is an emotional issue that is now channeled in a very sort of constructive manner, I feel, which is to the benefit of the industry. I think that's, that's the important thing to underline. And, and what's great about the A4ID concept is that they brought together you know, a lawyer who summarised the law, but then to work in collaboration with someone who can implement the law into policy initiatives that can then be put in place by the organisation. So it's this fusion between law and policy that is a powerful force when it comes to um, saying to the industry, uh, you know, what is expected of them in this area. But I'm optimistic. I mean, there's a lot of interest. But, of course, you know, the, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. So we'll talk again in three years and see where we're at.